In this exercise, we would like to find the point on the unit sphere, which is closest to the plane 3x plus y plus 4z equals 10. I would like to solve this very geometrically, so let's sketch a diagram first. Okay, let's say that's a sphere, the unit sphere. And I'll try to make it look a little bit more like a sphere. So here's the equator. Okay, that's good enough. I am not interested in drawing the plane perfectly the first time. I'll revisit that statement at the end. Whenever you're trying to set up a very geometric computation, often you just need a guiding diagram that shows you the quantities you need, and they don't have to be perfectly situated or drawn to scale. Meaning that I'm just going to throw the plane up here. Okay, so let's say that's the plane. We are looking for the point on the sphere, which is closest to the plane. Now, my picture, it's obviously not this one. It's not this one. It's somewhere around here. Because if I were to go straight perpendicular up from the sphere, my line segment that I would use to, say, connect the sphere, let's say it's about here, to the plane here, perhaps this is the shortest possible line segment connecting the sphere to the plane. Okay, sorry, I really struggled to draw that line segment. The question is, what is this point? Okay, from the diagram, we start to get some clues. Notice that the line segment that's connecting the sphere to the plane, it's perpendicular to both, which means we can immediately say what its sense of direction is. It's gotta be parallel to the orthogonal vector for the plane, which we know from the beginning. I'll just drop it here to be the vector, how about call it n, and it's the vector 3, 1, 4. Now 3, 1, 4 I've sketched as this vector, it might not be exactly that, some scaled version of it, but this sense of direction from our sphere to our plane is parallel to 3, 1, 4. Okay, so that's the first clue. The second clue is, notice that if I take this plane, if I just could grab it and sort of slide it down to the sphere, then it's going to touch the sphere at that point in a way which is tangent. So the point on the sphere, which is here, the point closest to our plane, is exactly the one whose tangent plane has an orthogonal sense of direction, which is 3, 1, 4. And that's really key. So again, if I took this plane and I shifted it down, we would have like a moment of tangency where our plane lies against our sphere in a perfectly flat way. It's happening at this point, telling us that this plane is parallel to the plane which is tangent to the sphere at that point. Okay, what I would like to do now, because I just threw a lot of words at you, is give you a moment to uh, digest this diagram. You can add some detail to it if you like, and then start to think about how we want to characterize the orthogonal vector at this point. The next observation I'm going to make is, is because we're working on a sphere and that's a very special object. Suppose that I want to look at this point XYZ just to give my diagram a little bit of space. Say that this is the point XYZ and it lives on the sphere. If I take this triple of values, X, Y, and Z, and turn it into a vector, I can think of that vector XYZ as the position vector for this point, which starts at the origin. So imagine this is the, the center of the sphere the origin, and it goes out to this point like this. So this is the vector x, y, z pointing us from the origin out to the point x, y, z, which lives on the sphere. Because this is a sphere, this position vector is perpendicular to the sphere, which means that this position vector is, is perpendicular to the plane tangent to the sphere at this point. So notice x, y, z written as a vector, is perpendicular to the tangent plane at x, y, z. And this statement I'm just making, I'm making here is, is true because we're working on a sphere. So that wouldn't be true in general, but it is true for a sphere because of this radial symmetry we have. So no matter how you draw a radius, it's perpendicular to the sphere itself. All right, so whatever the coordinates of this point are, 
we can characterize this position, or sorry, this um, orthogonal vector pointing up here like this as parallel to x, y, z. All right, I'm not sure I said that perfectly, but let's move on. So what we want is to find x, y, z. Let's start writing this down. Our goal is to find x, y, z on the sphere. So that the vector x, y, z is parallel to 3, 1, 4. There are different routes that you could take that information. So I can think of two different things that I'm going to set up. I'm only going to choose one of them. But let me give you a moment to pause and brainstorm what the next step might be. There might be a couple different approaches, as I said. And then I will come back and show you what I think is maybe the fastest way to get to the ending. All right, since again, we're working on a sphere, not just any sphere, the unit sphere, we know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, which means that this vector x, y, z is unit length. So notice x squared plus y squared plus z squared being 1 means the vector x, y, z is unit length. I'll write x, y, z is unit length. We need a unit length vector parallel to the vector 3, 1, 4. What we want to do is take 3, 1, 4 and normalize it, if you will, divide it by its magnitude so that it becomes a unit length vector. We found a unit length vector parallel to it. The thing is, it can point one of two ways. So what we'll say first is this vector we're looking for, x, y, z, is either one version or the other. Uh, 3, 1, 4, divided by the square root of 9 plus 1 plus 16 is going to be the square root of 26. It's either that vector or it's the opposite. Let me say negative 3, negative 1, negative 4, divided by the square root of 26. It's one of these two. Let me give you a moment again just to digest this. If this wasn't the way that you thought of, see if the vector that you got looks like one of these two. And then I will come back and we will figure out how to distinguish which is happening. So which vector do we want? All right, the answer is that it's this one. So the point on the sphere, which is closest to the plane, is the point 3, 1, 4 divided by the square root of 26. The other one is the antipodal point down here. So we found the closest and the farthest points from this plane. Now, how did I figure that out? Algebraically, one thing you can do is take either of these points, maybe take both of them for comparison, parametrize the line that passes through them and travels uh, in this way. So you have both the point and the vector. So you have the point, the sense of direction, parametrize the lines, figure out when they hit the plane, and then where do they hit the plane? Do the distance formula. That is the long way to solve this. The faster way depends on your ability to actually visualize the sphere and plane correctly in space. So what I'm going to do is actually erase the whole board and I am going to sketch the sphere and the plane actually more accurately. That's because if I can give you a more accurate picture, we can look at it and say, it must be this one. In particular, it must be in the first quadrant or first octant. That's really key. Okay, so there is an algebraic way if you cannot visualize this at all or the, the plane is not easy to work with, like this plane actually is, as I will demonstrate. You can literally take either of these points, parametrize the line segment through that point in the sense of direction, figure out when that intersects the plane by plugging your parametrization into the equation of the plane, solving for a value of t, and then you'll find this point both times, actually, so you only need to do it once. So both, both of them should intersect at the same point and then do the distance formula. So that's if you cannot visualize this at all, but let me give you the visualization. So the picture that we were looking at before was not drawn to scale. It wasn't accurate because it didn't need to be. We were able to identify what pieces of information we needed in order to solve the problem almost to the very end. Then at the very end, it's like you have to make some discernment between two points, which one is the correct choice. 
Let me show you how drawing the picture accurately can actually help you figure out that it was the one in the first octant, not the one diametrically opposite. Okay, so this is the first octant. I'm trying to sketch here proper XYZ space, drawn mostly to scale. We have, of course, that the unit sphere intersects the X, Y, and Z axes at one, of course, it's the unit sphere. For the plane, what you can do is say, okay, where does this plane intersect the X axis? That means zero out the Y and Z coordinates, and we're looking at three X equals 10. So that's like a little bit beyond three. So, okay, it's not gonna be to scale, but let's say this is 10 thirds. Here's the X intercept. For Y, when X and Z are zero, Y is 10, it's way over here. Here's the y intercept. And then 4z equals 10 when x and y are both zero, tells us what, five halves, so a little bit beyond two or between two and three. So let's say that's about here. It's very hard to draw a beautiful plane, right? So spheres, paraboloids, we can make great pictures. For planes, it's always a little bit unsatisfying when you sketch a plane in three dimensional space. But if your intercepts are all in the positive x, y, and z axes like this so that you're looking at the first octant, you can actually give a realistic picture of the plane if you're just visualizing the part that lives in the first octant. So it's gonna be a triangular shape. This is not the whole plane, obviously. I don't really mean for it to look like it's touching the sphere there. It's Okay, <laughs> just trying to connect this point to that one. And again, not drawn to scale. Okay. Whatever. So <laughs> there's one edge and the sphere should be inside. And likewise, over here, the sphere is inside. So this should intersection shouldn't really be happening. Also, that sphere is down below. Okay. So what that means is that we know our plane gets really close to the sphere in the first octant, and then it goes off like this. Diametrically opposite, the sphere is very far away from this plane. So we have this plane wedge here. This is just a triangular subset of the entire plane that goes on forever. But just based on this illustration of the sphere and this plane in the first octant, we can see that, hey, this plane gets really close to the sphere in the first octant, and then it goes off like that. So diametrically opposite is much farther away. So that's how I knew to select the point where the X, Y, and Z coordinates were all positive, not the ones where they were all negative, because that's going to be the exact opposite side of this. Okay, again, that's the rationale that I went through because this was something that was not too bad to visualize. There are algebraic alternatives that I kind of went through out loud, so you can test that and see if, if you get to the same conclusion. I hope you enjoyed working through this problem.